following copblock.org video is brought to you by nevertakeaplea.org. How's it going, everyone? Pete here, Bo behind the camera. Damo's off working already, but we're back in Greenfield, Massachusetts this week. Uh, behind me, you can see Marv, obviously looking pretty awesome. But uh, today I had a motion hearing to suppress evidence from the illegal search of Marv, my RV, which happened last year on July 1st uh, by Todd M. Dodge and some of his colleagues at the Greenfield PD. Uh, they had charged me with a, a misdemeanor VIN manipulation and a felony ammo charge uh, from that. And I'm happy to say that you know, we showed up ready to go, and uh, the uh, charges were dropped today. So they uh, today, one of my misdemeanors and one of my felonies has been dropped in Greenfield. So Adamo and I are both still facing a felony for felony wiretapping and a resisting arrest charge when we went limp and a trespassing uh, ordinance violation. So uh, I'm happy to say we're, uh, we started out on a good note. Um, the morning before, uh, this morning before I went in there, Bo and Adamo were out there handing out uh, don't take the plea flyers uh, awesome stuff check it out uh, go to freekeen.com search for don't take the plea we also included cop lock bumper sticker uh, as well and, a D and our dvd in there so a lot more people are going to be uh, learning about cop lock and the actions of the greenfield pd this week if they haven't already from when we we're here uh, first week with free state friendship tour afterwards the uh, the district attorney jeff bankster uh, submitted this motion to the court uh, he he asked that next week during our trial um, I understand the defendants themselves obviously don't have any control over civilians who might show in support of them, but to prevent, uh, I phrase it as wearing clothing in support of the defendants in the courtroom in front of the jurors, but also I would ask the in relation to handing out flyers in front of the courthouse as jurors. As you know, given the court set up here, jurors come in through the same door as do um, defendants, prosecutors, and court personnel. So I'd ask that either the somehow they be prevented from handing out flyers or the court takes steps necessary to prevent jurors from entering through that location and sequester the jurors as necessary until the further motions can be heard and addressed. So Adamo and I uh, today uh, in front of the judge essentially took issue with this, state our objection. I object to the motion for the fact that, I mean, I don't know how the state has any right to regulate what I wear. Um, if the court is about telling the truth and if, you know, that's all we're here to do is tell the truth. So what I wear is irrelevant. Yeah, I would weigh in. I mean, it, the language which have written messages in support of the defendants. I mean, we, I don't own any clothes that say a demo and Pete should have their charges dropped in Greenfield, Mass. I mean, you know, my shirt today is about liberty and it shows on the back it written in dozens of languages. It's a universal thing. It's not applicable just to us. To me, this is childish. I think the states and the district attorney is trying to Pull at strings. I mean, if this case is so strong, then he shouldn't have a problem with anybody doing anything. The evidence should point to my guilt. We're here to just tell what happened and speak the truth, and we're not, you know, I don't know. I don't know who's going to define what clothing isn't constitutes being in support or not being in support. I want to be clear that, like, I do not want to be held in contempt for the actions of another individual. So if that, I was wondering if you would define what would happen if a juror has a leaflet. Like, is that juror excused? Is the whole jury pool tampered? The juror has been tampered with way into the building. They may be disqualified from serving on the jury. That's okay. the risk. But anybody, any defendant, any party, civil or criminal litigation case, uh, and uh, that is always the case, irrespective of your cases. But anyway, that's essentially where we're at. We also got our property back today, uh, which was a surprise. So. This is the green metal box they have, they, that was in the back of Marv where they, that they opened and claimed to have found ammunition in, um, some 40 cal ammo that they alleged that I had. I had never seen it, and today I signed a form that said they can destroy it, which was like 50 rounds of ammo uh, because I don't have an FID card here in Mass. And they said if, I, if it were be, to be returned to me, they could arrest me right away. So anyway, got the ammo box back, which is good, and we got our other property back, so got... Uh, Got my, got my old phone back, which had been donated to us after, uh, from the People's Press Collective out in Colorado after our arrest in Mississippi in 2009. So hopefully I'll get this back up and running. We'll have quick once again. We'll be able to uh, stream live to the internet. We also got a Damo's old camera back. Uh, it's an old JVC. We don't ha have the uh, power cord for it, so we're going to have to maybe get a new one if we want to keep using it. And uh, my old Canon camera back. This is essentially the uh, same cameras we have now, except it's not HD. 
Great day for uh, Cop Block, for the truth and for justice here in Greenfield. We came out uh, with uh, one less felony, one less misdemeanor, our property back. And I, I think, uh, you know, we're feeling pretty good. We ran into a lot of people we know in town already, and uh, they're starting to stand up for their rights as well. So, you know, we're doing this together, so I just want to encourage everybody to, you know, stand up for what you know is right, and uh, we'll win in the end.